Hello, hello, everybody. I am going to be starting just recording like this, man, because the phone thing, it was like the light coming through was not the same on my laptop as it was when it comes through on my actual screen. So I don't really know what's happening with that. I've turned the frames per second up on this and also the size quality. So it should be just a bit better of a quality. It should take longer to upload and it means we can get these videos out before like midnight. So it should be all fine. I've just this minute got off of ELF Live. So I'll link that description. Me, Nick and Alex coming together for a great one. Had about seven voice cracks during the production, which was not fun. Man, that sucks. I kept going. <coughs> <coughs> not fun. But regardless, go watch that. It's good. We're going to do power rankings as per usual. The Monday, we do power rankings. The Tuesday, we will do the uh how the team's going to come into the game there's only one game on saturday which i'll obviously be streaming and then five games on a sunday or six games on a sunday regardless i'll let you know what i'm streaming and no Tori has not responded to my message just yet so we've got to wait to see uh what player i might do you know respond by the end of this one i'll just do someone else and circle back around to it however let's get into power rankings so number 17 prog lines down two places they lost to team that had never won in in this season yet so it's kind of hard for them to be anywhere else they go oh and eight they are still winless in their year left time period overall not good you know they didn't look convincing throughout to be honest any of the game perkins had zero time he had nothing to work with he was getting pressured immediately like the receivers did a decent job but it's just the offensive line is just it's honestly appalling like it's, it's that bad they lost 38 to 6 to a team that was previously averaging 10 points a game. It's just not good enough. Perkins, I, like I said, I like what he brings to the game, but he just has no time. The defense, they kind of got, you know, ran through. <laughs> for lack of a better term, 9 for 13 on third down percentages for the Enthroners. And they couldn't really con they couldn't really contain Robitaille. Uh, we'll get to the Enthroners in a second. But first, before the Enthroners, we're going to talk about Boston and the Dragons. They actually move up one. Regardless of the loss, regardless of, like, everyone leaving them they lost to a really good madrid team which is fair they didn't they didn't lose to a team that never won they lost to a team that won multiple games so they move up one shout out to all the barcelona dragons that played man seriously like they did just a good job in turning up like, i don't care what the scoreline was i know it was 50 54 to 0 but like the barcelona dragons turned up they played for their team for the fans they had free tickets for the, anyone who wanted to come watch. Great gesture. We had no Classico. This team is still alive. I really want the Barcelona Dragons to succeed. And I'm really happy that they played. And they move up one, regardless of the result. Just because of the team that they had played. And they've also won two games in the past. The Enthroners at 15. They move up one too. Now, they won the game, which I did not think they'd do. I loved the signings they've made. Like Tribier and Cephalocolis at the receiver and tight end position respectively did very well in their debuts of course both of them were cut by the mercenaries earlier in the year so it was good to see them back in the uh in the league Mangle was one of the MVP of the week can contenders he did so well 373 yards in a day the receiving wise Robitaille was the star of the show he had 118 and two touchdowns Alex Malchow called it when he scored it was a, a great call uh, on his part Defensively, Regan got two and a half sacks. Bodnar got one and a half sacks. Janos Zalaihi, who is my highest graded Hungarian player, he had a great game. He had a sack, he had a tackle for loss, he had a pass breakup. He deserves his flowers. They got home a lot on the defensive line, and that was what I said they needed to do, and they did. So I'm happy that they managed to do that. Big shout out to them, they did a good job. At 14, Milan, they didn't play. So they don't move, but they didn't play. Don't need to talk about it too much. Helvetic, one and six, but they nearly beat the Vikings. <laughs> and I know, I know they lost. I don't care. They remain where they are at 13 because they nearly beat the Vikings. Shout out to Carl Aiken, friend of the channel. He did great. He had 396 yards in the air, four touchdowns. Did throw two picks, which weren't the best two picks, but he also got 85 yards on the ground and a receiving touchdown. He did very well. We also got a catch for 14 yards, which is very cool. Spiller, honestly, could be a rookie of the year contender. Like, I know he's an offensive rookie of the year. He's probably locked to be one of them. But Torre hasn't got it guaranteed in the bag. It's not in the bag for him. 
Spiller is breathing down his neck. He had seven catches for 200 yards and two touchdowns. AFB, Anthony fucking Brown got 13 catches for 159, so he's still on fire. This was a fun game, and they really came back at the start. A lot of stuff going on with Algum. I think that's pretty well documented. You know, he comes out and says that he's leaving the team. The team says family issues, you know, we're going to depart. He then comes out with an AFI article, which, uh, if you don't know, I don't I don't work with AFI anymore, but I, I didn't like um, that article very much. I thought that it was a bit, maybe a bit, uh, you know, it's, it's controversial, but I think that they should be able to tell the whole story. It's just I would have liked to have seen both sides in the same article, personally, rather than Gunn coming out saying this thing, and then the team having to release a statement saying that stuff had happened, and players have come out and support the franchise. And I think Big Mike made a great point, the defensive line, about, like, we're still playing in this league. Like, can we not do this later? Like, we, we have games to prepare for. Like, you can sort your own shit out. Just do it behind closed doors. Like, we're still playing the game. So I think he made a really good point with that. Uh, as one of, the, like, the vocal leaders of this team and one of the better players, uh, I was very much in agreement with what he said about that situation. But they come at 13, 12. Frankfurt Galaxy, they fall down three places. Big fall for them. They lost to Cologne, which was a surprise. And if you haven't watched the game, I streamed the whole game. If you are new to the channel, then I stream the reactions to the games. And this was one of the ones I streamed. 35 to Cologne, 28 to Frankfurt. Frankfurt still have red zone offense problems. McKay was hit and miss. They ran a lot more than I thought they would with McKay. My evaluation on McKay was that he was not a massively mobile guy. Like, he's a good mobility dude, but he's not the kind of quarterbacks you have doing read options and stuff like that. I didn't need to pivot away from that, personally. I, I don't think that that's what he is. I still don't think that's what he is. I think that he's a, a guy that's more composed, more calm, let in bigger spots. He has a semi-okay offensive line, a really good run game. Sandro had 12 carries only. And I think you need to give him the ball more. Like, 38 passes and he 12 carries for your starting running back like i would like to see them give him the ball more i don't think they're doing enough in a run game they're kind of edging into berlin territory but they don't have the offense of berlin so it's a weird one kevin kyle was good strawman was good except for the fumble and it was a surprising loss but also kind of not surprising like frankfurt would be very disappointed they're two and four they've been a disappointing team um i think they need to make some changes within the club but They've been poor. There's, there's not really any way you can show career. They've been a bad team this year. It's not been particularly close, and they've been bad. What you do going forward, I think McKay needs to be more a bit built around him and his skill set. Like they didn't run Luke in these situations. They would at times, but I don't know why they pivoted away to to just give you the McKay run the ball every few plays. I, I don't like that idea, but. They need to make a lot of differences. Hugo Dyrell deserves some praise. He had 18 tackles, one interception, was also an MVP contender for the week. He did spectacular. Number 11, Hamburg Sea Devils. They lost hard. <laughs> they also lost against Ryan Fine. They did put up some points. They're in a very similar boat to Frankfurt. I'd like to see that rematch. Both 2 and 4. Both have quarterback issues. Both seem a bit directionless. But Jarvis got injured, like, in a walkout of this game, which is just brutal. Apparently, Torres Achilles, well, did a flip, which is just so hard, like, to see. Jarvis, of course, we all hope that he gets better soon because he's one of the league's premier receivers. And they, they lacked it. They, they, they missed him. They, they really did. They did spread the ball out a lot, passing-wise. You know, Fulford had 31 attempts for 240 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. He found the space. But he also flashed that poor decision making that we have seen from Fulford in his time in the Raiders. And so that one move, I, I, I think that if you have Trevorian Smith in that team, he does pretty much exactly the same job. I don't think there would be much of a difference in the stat sheet. So they're kind of just sat in the middle, wondering what to do. Uh, I think until next year. They've got a decent defense, but they got absolutely torched against the Ramfire. Just overall, just poor. They don't get to call back enough. They don't have enough of a pass rush. We saw that with, with Jadrian had all the time in the world and, and Hamburg just got slept, to be honest. Number 10, Voslav didn't play. Didn't move. Number 9, Cologne. Now, they move up three spaces. It is the first time that Cologne has moved. 
on these power rankings. Can you believe that? We're in week eight. First time they've ever moved. They go to two and four. But they beat Frankfurt. And they held the lead early. They, they let go of the lead. And then they made a comeback of, the, of their own. Like, which is which is good. Like, it showed a lot of heart. Legalize it for uh, Isaiah Weed. Naturally. That's his MVP slogan. Don't look just at the stats too much because the stats can be misleading. He did throw two picks. He only rushed for one touchdown. But those key pickups and those clutch plays, they went 10 for 15 on third down efficiency, which is great. Two fourth down conversions at two. 469 yards total offense. They ran the ball down their fucking throat. Gerald Alman is one of the hottest running backs in the league still. Gets a lot of like usage. So his yards per carry isn't crazy, but he's absolutely one of the best German running backs we have in this league. He's great. Uh, Lorax got a lot. Carves Hill got a few catches. And uh, they spread the ball out nicely. I think they had a good game plan. Their defense locked up. Bijan. Fucking now, Let's talk about Bijan for a minute. God. Fucking damn, Harris. Like, <laughs> Bijan Harris. Uh, big force fumble. He returns it for a touchdown. Gets a key interception. This is the second defensive touchdown he's had for the team. He looks awesome. He looks real good, and I wasn't too happy about them releasing Owens. Like, I think it could have been cool to have those together. Like, I, I think that would have been really interesting because they got Will Idle in the interior defensive line, and I, I don't mean to be critical, but a, a defensive tackle is a is a weird place to put an A. I would have liked to see Bijan and uh, and Owens in the same team, but that that's just me. But they Cologne walk around with a 35 to 28 win. Very impressive. Very impressive. Breaking into the top eight. Munich Ravens didn't play by week. Remain where they are. Berlin is seven, four and four. What, what the fuck do you really want me to say about this one? Right, <laughs> we're awful in the first half. Twenty-eight nil down. Awful, and then they put twenty-seven points up in the in the second half, which is completely different to how they usually do. They never do that, and they did. Sullivan was a very good uh, game for him. Uh, the running game was kind of cooking. Albert got seven attempts for 69 yards and a touchdown, but most of that came with that weird sneak that went for like 40, 50 yards. That was pretty fucking spectacular. The run game wasn't really there, except for that big run. Aaron Jackson is Aaron Jackson. Uh, Albert actually did get a, a really nice receiving touchdown as well. So they, they were moving the ball well. Their offense has never really been an issue. Their defense, oh, except from third down, they were very poor in third down efficiency. Only two for 13, which is poor. Defensively, they got torched. A, a lot in the first half. They made the adjustments, which I do want to give them credit for. They made adjustments in the second half. But, boy, was Edwards running all fucking over them. 140 yards, some key third down conversions. I think it was a third and 16. He runs left and gets the third, first down like in crunch time. Defensively, they got to the quarterback quite a lot. They, they did put pressure on Edwards, but they just couldn't finish sacks like at all. They, they had so many instances where they couldn't stop Edwards behind the line. They did get a number of sacks. So, Carl Kitchens got one and a half. Uh, Schroeder got one. Emil Ford did got half. But they couldn't turn these pressures and collapse pockets into sacks. And that was ultimately their undoing, to be completely honest. But they, 4-4-4, four four and four, kind of where do you go from here in terms of their record? They're just middle. But they're very good. They can compete with the best teams. They just have not been able to get over the hill. At 6, Reds Tyrrell. 5-3. and three. Bit of a skid. But they looked extremely competitive against one of the best teams in the league with Stuttgart Surge. They lost. They had a very close combat, but they lost 30-25. to 25. It, it was a mixed game because Perry didn't play wonderfully well. He threw a pick six to Raheem Wilson. He threw three picks in top one a day. Uh, two of which were like, you know, one was right at the end where he was trying to force the ball for a touchdown. I get that. The pig to Fetig was, you know, I at the time also said, oh, he's open and they got jumped. So that one's fair enough as well. The pick six though was rather poor. So stats maybe not reflective of the entirely, but Surge's run game really locked up the Raiders. They weren't really able to get much with their running backs going. 20 yards for Bonatti. Three touchdowns, but they're all very, you know, short yardage. Just punch it in. House of Anto only got 14 yards. Angler only got five. The big thing that killed the Raiders was that field goal. They made it 16-16, and they had a flag on a surge. So they were on like the one yard line. It was second and half a yard, and they didn't score a touchdown. That's inexcusable. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be honest. So you've got Edward, you've got Edwards, you've got uh, Perry who can just stretch an arm out over the top and get it in. You've got Hasavanta, you've got Bonatti, you have a good run game. You're at the half yard line. You need to score. And if they scored that, I feel like it could have been a different game, but they didn't. And they had to settle for a field goal. So you settled for a field goal, burned a ton of time off the clock, and then came out to bite them on the ass. So they stay at six. Madrid at five. Beat up on a bad team. You know, we don't need to talk about this one too much because Barca didn't have the players. Duncan played well. Patson did well. You know, they, they, they did exactly how we expected them to be. And they, they beat up on a bad team. Right, it makes sense. So number four, uh, the big four. Uh, we had Paris here last time. Who are we going to have this time? It's Vienna. Shock. I know. 8-0. and oh. They fall three places. But hear me out for a second. They nearly lost the Mercs. And you know how excited I got about the Mercs a second ago. But they did. They nearly lost the Mercenaries. I know they put up 49 points. I know their defense was incredible. They got eight sacks as a team. They were all over. But busted coverages. That's what really killed them off. Just constant busted coverages. We, we talked about how many yards the uh, the mercenaries receiver goes for. We had Spiller to go for 200. And AFB went for uh, 159. So it was a hell of a game for those two. Vienna just looked vulnerable. And it's not like they took off all their guys. Ben Holmes threw another pick. But he did overall have a good game. But he did throw another pick. Which is not alarming. But it's not good. Reese Horn got three touchdowns. We didn't see much of Torre or Schumacher in this game more of uh, Horn and Lianema but it was just kind of a disappointing performance from, from a Vikings perspective you can see some holes and if they're doing that against the Mercs uh, we'll see maybe if they play some up some competition they might they might struggle a little bit more and then they came in expecting to dominate they got kind of punched in the mouth a little bit and they're like oh fuck <laughs> so that kind of shocked them at three who we got who we got who we got still got surge still they don't move they beat, it was kind of a very similar situation with the Vikings. They won, but they didn't make it look entirely convincing. And the Surge are an elite team, so the Vikings all, like, this top five is incredibly elite. Like, they could move around quite a lot. We have seen some decent movement this week. But the Surge won against a better team than Vienna, hence why they are above Vienna. And Stuttgart have a better roster. I think that they, and also less injuries, I think they came in a little bit rusty from the weeks. You know, they, they beat the fuck out of most of the teams they played against. Their offense came in a little bit slower. Took them a while to get used to it. And then eventually they started to get, get a little bit more into it. And then they kind of slumped off. But they still walked out to win. Defense got them to win on this one with uh, with a pick six. I think without, well, honestly, without this great of a defense, they would have they would have lost. You know, they got three picks. But they only won by five. Like, it was a close game. It was a really, really close game. I think without this, the strength of this defense, he would have lost that game. But they have that strength of a defense, so it's not really a factor. They ultimately walked away with the win, and that's all that really matters. And number two, I think you probably know where this one's going. Paris Musketeers. They got close. They moved up two spots. They, they nearly lost, but they didn't. They got a big lead which they showed they can do, and then they kind of came a little bit on the clutch at the end, which is something they, we kind of know they do. Edwards was another guy who was on an MVP level run. He's currently playing out of his fucking mind. He got 140 yards on the ground and talked about with Berlin's rush defense. But they, like, Edwards was absolutely phenomenal on third downs and those big runs and those clutch plays, and this is something that we've been critical on this channel about, is his clutch plays. That was not there. <laughs> like he played so well, he played lights out in this in that like last part. There was an interception, which you know wasn't the best, and the fumble. I don't think it was his fault. More of a bot snap. But those runs, man, they won in the game. Without those runs, they wouldn't have been able to extend the drive, take the time off the clock, and and ultimately walk away with the W. But he did he did damn well. Tegadam is continuing to be one of my favorite players to watch in the league, just because you never really know what he's going to do. He's a quarterback. He's now playing receiver. He played a bit of receiver last year too, but like. He's not meant to be getting 106 yards and two touchdowns, but he fucking is. So, <laughs> Remy Bertolom, massively underrated receiver. He needs his flowers. Kevin Mwamba got a touchdown as well and a hurdle. I think it got called back, but in my mind, it happened. I want to see LaRose get involved a little bit more. And Mitchell is massively slowed down. I don't really know why. Like, Mitchell had some drops. 
and LaRose just isn't really being as used as much as I thought he would be, uh, which is kind of a surprise. I, I thought that LaRose would have a, a big part in this offense, especially with Mahonwu out. But that's not been the case, and that's uh, very surprising, to be honest. But Mitchell, four yards, LaRose only nine. Number one, Ryan Fire. Dominant win. Just an absolute annihilation of a, a semi decent team. They moved 7 1, they move up one spot. They are back on top. I looked at my preseason rankings and they were on top for that. And they're back on top in week eight. An absolute magical display by Glenn again. He's got over the 1,200 yards. He's going to get the single season rushing touchdown record. So, congratulations to him. Fourth game in a row with three touchdowns or more. He's the MVP. I don't think it's even really very close at this point that Glenn is the MVP. JJ and Perfect Powers are already in 12 for 14 for 194. Six touchdowns. Super clean. Some absolute dimes thrown by him. The offensive line looked great. Like the defense held up a few busted coverages, but I think they kind of took their foot off the gas and got a little bit sloppy, but you know, they still did well. It was just they still do lack a little bit with the with the the pass rush. Aaron Donkor is starting to emerge now as a great pass rush, and we, we expected that. It took him a while to get started, but now he's there. Edges still though, not getting home a ton uh, on those edges, but they were just a dominant team. They've gone to the red zone nine times. They scored nine times. Like, <laughs> like you know, you can't really complain about that. They looked dominant. It was an easy win for them, and. And Ryan Fire walk away with the number one ranking. And I, I don't think that many people will be confused about that. I think that will be quite expected that they did this well and they walk away with it. All right, let's finish off with the full list of a power ranking. 17, Prague Lions. Full last after remaining winless, even with an opportunity to get a win against a team that's never won. 16, Barcelona. They turned up. That's all we can really ask them to do. 15, Enthroners. First win of the year. Congratulations. Milan didn't play. Helvetic kept it close with an elite contender and scored 40 points, which is incredible. Frankfurt, disappointing loss against a rival. Really interesting game, but they fall short and kind of revealing. Hamburg got annihilated, but kind of expected them to get beaten, to be honest. Roslav at 10, didn't play. Cologne at 9, they break out of the same spot they've been in all year, but they come at 9 after a big win against Frankfurt. Very heavy on the run, which I liked, and they ultimately came away with a big, 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 big W in the West. At 8, Munich didn't play. 7, Berlin. Kept it close. Bad first half, great second half. Weird kind of paradox going on there. Conundrum, and it was all in the... We're upside down. We're in the fucking upside down when it comes to Berlin. But they lost ultimately, and they come in at seven. Raiders kept it close as well against the Surge. Could have won the game. Got very close to doing so. Just fell short of the final hurdle. At five, Madrid beat up on a bad team. Can't really say too much. Vienna... Gave up 40, pe 40 points to the Mercs, which is not great. And they fall, but they are still in the top four. Surge at three. Don't move. Kind of close, but their defense showed that it's not just an elite offensive unit. The defense comes to play too, and they're a fantastic defense. Paris at number two. Again, quite close, but they went 28 points ahead of Berlin, which is hard to do. And they're a very, very good team offensively. Their defense slacked off a little bit in the second half, but was able to cause problems for Berlin and Berlin are a great offense and I think Paris can come in with this with a good a good amount of momentum. Number one, Ryan Fire, absolutely dominant win. Offense is full fledged fucking go. <laughs> All pistons are firing offensively, running game, passing game seems to have caught up a lot as well. They're a fantastic team and they remain at number one. This has been good. This has been fun. Go watch the left live. Uh, ignore the voice cracks I did during that. It'll be fine. Outcome videos, of course, this will be out on the Monday. Same day I'm recording the left live. That's how I do it. I study for your left live and this, and then I do them both on the same day, so it makes it easier for everyone to get plenty of content for the week. Tomorrow, we get a look at the games and the matchups. Wednesday, I will start tape watching for a receiver, but maybe not Torre. I might do Spiller, maybe. If you guys want me to do certain players, like comment down below if you want me to do certain guys. I'd like to do maybe uh, an offensive player. I've done Chad, I've done um, Digan, who I can link. And Digan had a great game. I just want to say Digan looked great in coverage. So that's something that I called as well. 
I want to do an offensive player this week. Uh, that would be good fun to do. So if you like this one, subscribe, like the video, share it, whatever. I don't usually harp on it too much because these videos are, are more for the fans, you know. I don't think people are going to tune in for week eight <laughs> and, and really catch on. So the people that have stayed from week one to week eight and the new people as well, shout out to you guys. Thank you. Thank you everyone who joined in the streams. Amazing streams. I know I streamed for like 13 hours during that week. Uh, during, the, during the production. But a record amount of watch time on both of them. Both got me over 60 hours of watch time. Which is incredible. Uh, and I can't thank you guys enough for turning up for those streams. We started with one or two people. And it was just basically me just talking to myself. Uh, and then we got like a good 8 to, to 10 people. To come in quite regularly. And we have good discussions. Like about everything. So if you're new to this channel. You sticking around for the outro come join in for some of the streams man we, we have good fun we talk about different shit in europe not not all the football honestly like we just talk about everything uh it's a good little community we have going on here which i'm really proud of go watch your life live as i said and go watch the rest of my videos and player evaluation and go watch the everything that i've ever made i'll try and get a short out as well i'm not sure what to do a short out on but i usually do a short on wednesday when i'm studying so it's kind of easy to film but we'll we'll see how it goes but rambling Thank you for staying. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe, stay sharp. Goodbye.